Father, bless us now as we preach the word of the Lord. May we preach it with power and authority in Jesus' name. Amen. On this wise shall ye bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. I want you to bless them by telling them something. I don't want you to bless them by giving them anything. But I want you to tell them something. You know, the Bible says that if you give a prophet a cold glass of water in the name of a prophet, you shall reap the prophet's reward. The prophet's reward is in his mouth. The reward of the prophet is what the prophet tells you. A prophet of God can speak a word that would change your life forever. Amen. Turner, that's what happened to me when I heard your grandfather preach. It was a word that he spoke, and I heard it at the tender age of 16. That word that he spoke that came out of his mouth as he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He spoke a word, and I heard it. Here I stand at the age of 60, some 44 years later, still operating in the strength of that word that came out of the mouth of the prophet. It changed my trajectory. It changed my life. It changed everything. He spoke it and I heard it. He didn't give me anything that day. He didn't give me any money. He didn't give me um, any he didn't give me a watch, although in his life, he did. Mother, you remember the Texas Instrument watch that he had, and um, Pastor got a, a new watch, and he wanted to give his Texas Instrument watch to someone, and he said, he, he said to me, I asked the Lord, God, who can I give my watch to? And he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, give it to the one who helps you the most. And he handed me that watch. It touched me uh, in ways that I shall never forget. But that's not what happened to me the day I met Jesus. He didn't hand me a watch. He didn't give me a dollar. He didn't give me anything. He spoke. And the words that came out of his mouth changed me. And I praise the Lord for the blessing that was given to me as he said something. The most powerful thing on earth is the preaching of the word. One man said to Jesus, I am a man under authority. I know how these things work. You don't have to enter into my home. Just speak a word and my child will be made whole. Isn't that something? So our text says, on this wise shall you bless the children of Israel saying unto them. The blessing. Some refer to this, and it's an accurate uh, reference, these particular passages, as the priestly blessing. Or one could call them the spoken priestly blessings. Blessing or the spoken blessing. One writer said uh, concerning uh, this particular prayer, these words, uh, they are also termed the Aaronic benediction. Aaronic because the first priests in Israel came from Moses' brother Aaron. Aaron was the first priest. And Aaron's sons, his descendants, made up the priesthood. It's called a benediction because the word benediction literally means spoken blessings. Bene, well. Diction, to speak. To speak well. A benediction is a spoken blessing. 
This is why it is not good for members to leave a church service on a regular basis before you receive the benediction. You want to get that last blessing spoken over you. I don't know about you, but I want every blessing that the Lord has for me. And uh, if it means staying until the close of the service in order for me to get one more blessing, I don't mind staying to get that blessing. It is the benediction. Are you with me? See, so, uh, and another thing, a sign of spiritual immaturity is when one cannot stay for the benediction. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. Sometimes people have to leave early to go to work. Sometimes people have to meet certain deadlines, different things people have to do. But on a regular basis, don't you be that person whom no matter how late or how early we get out of service, you got to leave before the benediction. Service for some can start at 11 and end at 11.30, and they still leave at 11.29. They, they want to get a jump on the crowd. Don't let that jump mean that much to you. You need that final blessing. Perhaps the most important or the most impressive aspect of this prayer is that it is a provision for God's desire to bless his people. This prayer, I want you to let that sink in, is a provision. It is a means. It is uh, a provision for God's desire to be manifested on his people. It shows that God wants to bless us. So blessing in this particular prayer is God's idea. You know, there is a notion that you got to pull on God, beg him, fast for the rest of your days, and do all kinds of things, practice all kinds of ascetics to get God to bless you. But the truth is, it is the Lord's desire to bless his people. It has always been God's desire to bless his people, to bless and keep his people. And in our text, we see that blessing God's people was God's idea. The blessing of this benediction was and is that it invoked and it invokes the power of God on the behalf of the people of God. Blessings that would bring things such as, look at this, numerous descendants. Now I just made the abortion industry mad because they don't think having children is a good thing. But, but children are a blessing from the Lord. Amen. The fruit of the womb is his reward. It's a blessing. Amen. Look at this. Uh, these blessings, uh, they give numerous descendants. Look at this. Fruitful land. You want God to bless your job. To bless your employment. Whether you are uh, a farmer and you're into agriculture or if you're uh, uh, working at Research Triangle Park and you're into um, uh, the pharmaceutical industry or you may be into uh, the computer industry. You want the Lord's blessings on what you do. You want the land to yield for you. These blessings give numerous descendants fruitful land. How about this? Good health and long life. Deliverance from danger and oppression. And they give the blessings of this particular benediction. Gives protection from one's enemies. And the greatest blessing is that it gives us God's abiding presence. You know, Upper Room, 
We do not make our boasts in ourselves because to boast in yourself is a dangerous and a silly thing. But to fail to boast in the Lord is equally dangerous. And when God gives you reasons to boast, he expects us to do so. I am grateful to God that throughout this pandemic, God has watched over us. I'm grateful that this is week 68. 68 weeks of live services. And anything you do for 68 weeks is not luck. Amen. Amen. 68 weeks and uh, in that time, after the first few weeks, the first five weeks or so, we figured out that we needed to go to two services because the members got upset because the members would come to church on time for the 11 o'clock service. They would come on time between 10.30 and 11 on time. But the visitors would show up at 9. Amen. 8.30 and 9. And sit there until the 11 o'clock. So the members found themselves having to sit in the overflow. And they didn't like that. So thank God for the overflow. We watching it on television back there. And so we had to shift. And by the grace of the almighty. God has blessed us and God has blessed yours truly to stand right here for 67 weeks nonstop and most of them preaching two sun times on Sunday God has watched over me God has watched over you he's kept us he's healed he's delivered and that needs to be told. You know, people try to make their reality your reality. But what am I supposed to do? Ignore these 67 weeks and pretend that God has not watched over me. And that God has not watched over you. And that God has not uh, kept uh, these mothers and kept the saints. And yes, saints have... A contracted COVID because the, the virus is in the world. It's in the world and we live in the world. The problem with the thing is every time someone gets one, whether they've been to church or not, we want to put it on the church. Nobody, nobody puts it on Harris Teeter, Walmart, Kmart, uh, uh, amusement parks and Whole houses, ABC stores, vape stores, ball games. They don't put it on these places, but they put it on the church. God has been good. I told him the other day, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't, didn't have to do it. And it was his idea. Amen. And uh, have given us strength. And we make our boast in the Lord. See, because, let me tell you something. God blesses us to be a blessing. The whole point of this. See, God wants to bring these blessings, numerous descendants, fruitful uh, land, good health, long life, deliverance, danger from oppression, and uh, uh, deliverance from danger and oppression, protection from one enemies, God's abiding presence. He gives us these things to make his people his instrument so that we can share with the world. Bible says in Genesis 12 and 3, I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse him that curse thee. And through thee shall all the families of the church be blessed. Let me tell you something. This is the church's finest hour. 
if churches will take advantage of it. The world is dark. The world is afraid. Are you praying for me? The world is down and out. The world is visibly shaken by the things that are going on in the world. And you know what they need to see? They need to see strong, competent, confident Christians. They need to see people who know how to believe God instead of Christians who are as afraid as they are. You all remember Hurricane Friend? I'm going to preach to you in a minute because you all kind of stingy with your amens today. But I remember when Fran came through Raleigh. We were living in the Weatherstone area. Pam, you remember? And uh, when Fran uh, crossed over, uh, I had never been uh, through the, the, I never, I knew about it, but I never experienced the eye of a hurricane. And uh, the eye came over. I thought it was over. I went out there and looked, and everything was calm. And, you know, I think when Fran came through, you know, being the man of the house, uh, I wanted to protect my family. But, Mother, I think I kind of, uh, I, I think I kind of lost it because I was determined to protect my family, right? So Fran is blowing over. This is before the eye came. So I told Pam and, the, and my children, Crystal and Patrick, you all, you all get in a safe place, and I'm going to protect the family. And I went and sat on the steps of the house with my gun. I told you I lost it. I was gonna shoot Fran. Fran proved to be too much for any gun. Fran would blow his tank away. There I, here I am sitting there. So when the eye came, I went outside and I'm thinking the thing was over. And how about this? The backside came around. Now that's when the wind really blew. Blew over trees and everything. So when it was over, the next day we came out and we had some wonderful neighbors in the neighborhood. And they, they were not believers. And everyone in the neighborhood knew that we were holiness. You know, sanctified, church of God in Christ, saved, spirit-filled, love Jesus. Did I say holiness? Church of God in Christ, sanctified. It's because, we you know, when you're sanctified, people are supposed to know it. Now, if your neighbors don't know you're sanctified, there's a good reason. Of course, you're not. Because when you're sanctified, you don't keep that to yourself. You tell somebody, I've been sanctified. They say, what does that mean? You say, I'm glad you asked. Then you begin to share the story. So my, my neighbor, when she saw me, uh, her and her husband, they had a look on their face that really, they were, they were, they were, they were scared. To, they didn't know what to think. They had never experienced anything like that. And when they looked to us, they looked in my direction. They, his wife in particular, she looked and her expression said, what do we do? What is this? What? been through something that had clearly shaken her. I thank God that I was able to look at her and tell her God is good. And to smile at her and tell her he has us and he's taking care of us and that everything would be all right. Well listen, the whole world now is shaken. Marriage is being redefined. Wrong is being called right. Right is being called wrong. We've got a virus that we don't know what to do with. You're trying to figure out whether to take the jab, and if so, how many? All kinds of things are going on, and the world is looking for somebody to, who will show stability, someone who's not afraid. And Jesus said to the church, you are the light of the world. Is that Bible? I understand that passage more now, more clearly now than I ever have. We're the light of the world. We're supposed to be the ones who are showing the world 
how to get through times like these. The born again believer, the spirit filled believer. You know, before COVID, it was popular for everybody to talk about the atmosphere. People don't like it when I jump on this stuff. They think I'm picking on them, and I am. See, because you can't take it back. Everybody's bold when there's no challenge. I, God want to know what do you do when you get hit in the mouth. Praise the Lord. When, when resistance comes, everybody, he's in the atmosphere. He's in the atmosphere. Governor said, close your church. People said, forget atmosphere. Shut the church down and went home. The new atmosphere was to stay home scared behind closed doors. So much for atmosphere. But the world needs to see strong, positive Hallelujah, spirit-filled believers showing them that our God is still in control. At work, rest, and play, they ought to see you on fire. When you walk up in there and you're just as afraid as they are, you're not a witness. They walk up here, hey, honey child, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I don't know if we're going to make it or not. I, I just don't know anymore. What? The Christian's saying they don't know anymore. What kind of Christian are you? What kind of believer are you, evangelist? What kind of bishop are you, bishop? Pastor? The Christian is built for adversity. Amen. Our God promised to never leave us. Is that what he said? And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. I'll repeat it. This is the church's finest hour if we take advantage of it. But if we behave like the world behaves, if we're just as afraid as they are, if we, praise the Lord, cower like they do, if we don't speak up, now, uh, eight, uh, uh, ministers, MIT class, I have a dilemma Tuesday. God has spoken. I'm not, since we're streaming, I'm not going to tell who it is. God has spoken to one of our uh, members who is in the know about certain things. And Tuesday, she is uh, going to go downtown and face the authorities and make a stand for Jesus. Uh, now, John, you know I can't. We might have to have our MIT class downtown and stand with our sister who is going to lay out the facts. And she said to me in eight o'clock, she said, you know, Bishop, the word you preach today is exactly what I needed to hear because the enemy was talking to me and trying to talk me down. But God has given me something and I know what I'm talking about. And, and Satan don't want my voice to be heard. And, uh, and so I asked what time, and she told me. I said, uh, praise the Lord, don't be surprised if I don't show up. And, and, and then she said something that really got me. Uh, and she said, well, Bishop, it would just do me good. It would bless me. I'd really appreciate it. I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. I'm going. See, God didn't call us to just put on pretty suits, and drive big cars, praise the Lord, and build a big church. God called us to fight the good fight of faith and to, 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 to represent Jesus in this world. Let me move on. Y'all don't like this kind of preacher. But as Christians today, we have a right to claim this prayer, to claim these blessings because of what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 
We have a right to these blessings because we are in Christ. The God of the Bible gave me this blessing. I'm going to pronounce it over you in a few minutes. He gave me this blessing to pronounce over you, I guess a week or two ago. I, I, I tracked it down. The last time I had, when we had our men's meeting, the fourth Tuesday in last month, that's when it was. That day, that day, uh, the riders, I know y'all sick and tired of hearing me talk about these bikes. The riders, and I, I love it because we, we have one wonderful prayer. And uh, we had prayed. And while praying, Elder Melvin uh, was there and uh, the guys, I said, I spoke in tongues, I said, God have given me something. And he gave me two messages at one time. He gave me this one, and he gave me the message that I've been preaching, fighting the right fight the right way. Ephesians chapter 6. Now we're going back to Ephesians chapter 6 Thursday night, if it's the Lord's will. But God gave me this at the same time. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Patrick, the people have been standing firm. The people have proven that worship is worth the risk. The people have been standing on the word of God. I want to bless my people. And he said, I want you to speak a word of blessings on the people. And I'll tell you when to do it. See, because let me tell you, you know, you have to be revived. You have to be revived. I, I, I can stand here and hold this pineapple juice for a long time. Now, I can't hold it like this for the rest of the day. Even though the weight of this juice and this glass will not change. However, the energy that I am using to uh, hold this will dissipate. Over time, it'll feel like this is getting heavier. It's not. I'm losing strength. See? But I'm still holding up the banner. Every now and then, God knows how to put that strength back in you. God knows how to send the word that will revive your soul. Where you're able to fight again. See, man is not like God. See, the Bible said this about Jesus. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Christ never misses a step. Christ never gets weak. Christ never gets slow. Jesus is as powerful today as he was when he walked this, this planet. But human beings get tired. Human beings grow old. Human beings over time lose it. If you live long enough, you will outlive your ability to do what you're doing today. Humans lose it, but God never loses it. We serve a God who never sleeps. We serve a God who never slumbers. He said the sun will not smite thee by day, by day nor the moon by night, and the Lord knows how and when to come in. And to touch you again. Somebody ought to throw up both of their hands and say, Bless me, Lord. Bless me. Yes. I heard from him. I heard from him. Well, the God of the Bible have been faithful. He has, according to verse 25, the A-Cloth made his face to shine upon us during this season. Now, as we grapple with COVID and the various variants, and whether to get vaccinated. Somebody said the other day, I have my shots, uh, and I'm safe. In my mind, I'm saying safe from what? People still die of other things. And uh, people, get, they get, Bishop, people get nervous when I talk like this. But we used to believe that our life and times was in the hands of the Lord. We used to believe that uh, uh, when the Lord gets ready, 
you still do what you're supposed to do to take care of yourself. You know? I'm a half nut. I try to eat right, drink, I do, I try to work out, I do things to take care of myself. But I realize that my, uh, no matter how much I prepare, there are things out there that can get through my defenses. And except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watch over the city, the watchman wake it but in vain. We used to believe that it was in the hand of God. Now we, we, don't, we don't lean on every word that comes from the pastor. We don't lean on every word that comes from the Lord. We lean on every word that comes from Fauci. That's part of the problem. We're living in a time. You don't like my preaching today. We're living in a time, hallelujah, where the enemy has shaken the world. We're grappling with these things. We're grappling with an attack on our families, an attack on our morals, an attack on our children. Yes, even an attack on our lives. And God said to me, says, I want you to speak my desire upon my people. And here at the close of the first section of the book of Numbers, you know, the book of Numbers is said to be divided into three sections. And, uh, and the three sections are based on locale. Mount Sinai, Kadesh Barnea, and the plains of Moab. At the close of this sixth chapter. It's a funny thing, uh, district missionary, you love the Bible. This, this is just between me and you. It's, you know, it might be boring to everyone else, but I like these little things. It's, it's just amazing to me how in this chapter, the chapter only has 27 verses but verse 1 through 21 deals with the Nazarites yes, sir. and the requ requirements of the Nazarite, what you got to go through to be a Nazarite. I find it odd that at the end of that, he switches from the Nazarite yes. and switches to this blessing. It's almost like it don't fit the chapter because Moses, God takes a sharp turn. Praise the Lord. And he moves from uh, the Nazarite to blessing his people and he takes a sharp turn in verse 22. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak ye to Aaron and to his sons. That is, I know that for 21 verses I was talking to you about the Nazarites and Nazarites are non-priestly Israelites who could take the vow that would get them closer to God. And he gives an extensive uh, description of the requirements in verses 1 through 21. But God is saying, so that my blessing will have the full effect. This blessing that I want to give to my people, I can't count on the Nazarites because uh, they're, they're not ranked high enough. God said for this uh, uh, blessing to have full effect, the Lord says, I want to tell Moses to leave the Nazarites alone now and go and speak to the priests. Go speak to the sons of Aaron. We're going up now a little higher. This is why as you climb in God, you got to let God anoint you. You can't have a praise the Lord, uh, a powerful title with a weak man's anointing. You can't have a powerful title, but you're just a scared little girl. You got the longest title in Christendom, but you're afraid. You all talk. See, there comes a time when the, our metal get tested. The devil knows how to test these chains. Praise the Lord is to see if there's something to it other than uh, a decoration. And he said, now, in order for my, uh, I feel something, in order for my uh, blessing to have full effect, I'm going up a little higher. And he says, I want you to speak to the priest. Now, he said, uh, in other words, God said, now, here's how I want you to say this. And uh, this is how you will invoke my blessings upon the people. And notice what he said. He said in the text, 
on this wise shall you bless the children of Israel saying. So God said, now when you speak to the priest, tell the priest, don't add anything to it. Tell the priest, don't add that personality to it. Tell the priest, don't deviate. I want them to say this to my people. If the priest says this to my people, my people will be blessed. But it takes the priests to say it. You know, this kind of reminds me of uh, the prayer that we pray the least. And we've relegated it to nothing but uh, uh, funerals and form and fashion. And that is the Lord's Prayer. And some of these prayers that we're praying, I think we would move God much quicker if we would actually pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, and verse 9, he says, After this manner, therefore uh, pray ye. He says, here's how I want you to pray. He said, pray this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Here's what you pray. Tell the Father, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Then ask him, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power to do this. And the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes we pray everything but that. But I want to tell you, if you want to move God, if you really want to move him, now you can go to him with your own words, but nothing moves God like reciting what he said. Nothing moves God like reminding God of what the Lord has told him. That the Lord have told you what came out of his mouth. So Jesus said, when you pray, learn how to recognize me. First of all, you say, our father got to know who he is, which out in heaven. And then once you get started, the first thing you ought to do is give God a praise. Hallow be thy name. Acknowledge to him. I don't care what kind of trouble you're in. Tell him that his name is holy. He already knows it, but he want to know if you know it. See, sometimes when we get in a little trouble, we act like God's name is not holy. But how many know that his name is still holy? When it's raining on the outside, it's still holy. When the devil is coming against you, the name is still holy. So he said, when you pray, call me. My father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And before you ask me for anything, pray that what I want happen. Pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. How on earth as it is in heaven? Well, how is the will of God being carried out in heaven? Well, ever since he kicked the devil out and his demon followers, heaven's been a perfect place. And you ought to pray that the same way it is up there, that God let it take place down here. Thy king, thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And then you can go on and ask him for what you want. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and then ask them for help. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom. You notice you open with a prayer and open with a praise and you close with one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever Amen. I, I want you to go home sometimes. I challenge you to go home sometimes and just pray this prayer. Since it was the one that Jesus crafted. Since it was the one that he said pray. And uh, in our text, we see the Lord giving the priests some instructions. Telling them how to pray. Are you praying with me? The first thing I want you to notice is the repetition of the name, the divine name, Lord. Yahweh, Jehovah, you see in verse 24, the Lord bless thee. In verse 25, the Lord maketh his face to shine upon thee. In verse 26, the Lord lift up his countenance against thee. 
Notice in all three verses, they mention the Lord. They utter the divine name, which is fitting for us because as Christians, this is where we began to get our revelation of the Trinity. The threefold use of the name of the Lord suggests that our God is a God. He is a, a trinity. He's one God in three persons. One God manifested in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You know when he got ready to make man, I heard him say, and let us make man in our own image. And we see a little bit of the Godhead in Genesis chapter 1. For it tells us in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it tells us that the earth was void and was empty and became void. And it was dark, but the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. And then I heard John say, in the beginning was the Word and the word was with God and the word was God and the same was in the beginning with God and without him was there not anything made that was made and down around the 14th verse of John 1 it says and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and then I heard Paul write in uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 14, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Look at the Trinity. And then I heard Jesus, yes sir, in Matthew 28 and 19, he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Trinity. Thank God that we know that there is one God manifested in three persons. And the last thing, one other thing I want to tell you before I close and pray. Though I want you to see the repetition, you school teachers out there, the repetition of the singular pronoun, the. In verse 24, the is mentioned two times. In verse 25, the is mentioned twice. And it's mentioned twice. In verse 26, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord maketh his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift his countenance upon thee and giveth thee peace. What is the, what's behind the use of the word thee six times in three verses? A good Bible student knows that repetition is emphasis in the Bible. When they keep using a thing, they're trying to emphasize something. And here's what they're emphasizing. While the words are directed to the entire community, the pronouns are singular. That is, the Lord blesses, he blesses the whole by blessing individuals. And he blesses individuals by blessing the whole. So if the Lord bless thee, and 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 if he, if he bless enough of us individually, he's blessed us all. And then if he comes in and he blesses us all, that means he's blessing every one of us individually. And I'm just like the song that said, why don't others thou art calling? Don't pass me by. How many want to be blessed? If you want God to bless you, lift your hand and say, Lord, bless me real good. And then point towards your neighbor because you want God to bless everyone else. And just ask God to bless everybody in this house. Yeah! Yeah, Lord! I see the Lord passing out blessing. I see him blessing over in this section. I see him over in the amen corner. I see him blessing everywhere. 
but you got to reach up and grab your blessing. Oh, Lord, bless me. Oh, Lord, bless my neighbor. Lord, bless my friends online. Lord, bless our whole church. Yeah, yes. Somebody praise him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless thee. He said, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Let's go home, Brother Rayford. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. In verse 25, 24, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. That is, cause good to come our way and then preserve us to enjoy that good. Thank you, Jesus. How many know that he knows how to bless you? And in the face of COVID, cancer, and everything else, he's able to keep you alive where you're able to enjoy his blessings. He can give you a home and then give you health where you can enjoy. He can give you a good job and then give you strength to be able to do the job. He's able to fill your refrigerator with all kinds of goodies and then give you health to be able to enjoy your food. Oh, Lord, thank you for your blessings. And Lord, thank you for your keeping power. So if you know you've been kept, 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 you ought to praise him for not only blessing you, but keeping you right where you are. Oh, thank you, Lord. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, he's keeping me. He's keeping me. church we've never had a brother's keepers uh, auxiliary you see because I don't want to name anything after uh, the words of a killer a friend uh, a, a, a murderer the man who committed uh, the first act of fratricide in the Bible fratricide is when brother kills brother Cain Kill Abel, and God walked up to him and said, "Where is your brother Abel?" I heard Cain say to the Lord, "I don't know where he is. Am I my brother's keeper?" Well, you know Cain was wrong because all throughout the Bible, the word keeper, the word keeper is only referred. It don't refer to your mama. It don't refer to your daddy. It don't refer to the government. It don't refer to the CDC. It don't refer to the Republicans, nor to the Democrats. It doesn't refer to a welfare check, but it only refers to the Lord. God is the only keeper. Aren't you glad that you have your faith? in the Lord, aren't you glad that you know that he's able, able, able to keep you, able to hold you up, now under him who is able to keep you from falling. I'm so glad that in these six or seven weeks, God's been good to me. God has kept me. He's made me strong. He's given me power. Power to preach. Power to pray. Power to run. Power to jump. Power. He let me live. He let you live. You ought to thank God for his goodness, for his kindness, for his keeping power. 
He's keeping me. He's keeping me. Oh, Lord. Not only will he bless you, but he'll keep you. That's one blessing. The next blessing is, uh, the Lord maketh his face to shine upon thee. Time is running out. But when you get home, I want to give you an assignment. Read Exodus 34. 29, when you get home. I said, when you get home. Exodus 24, Exodus 34, 29 through 35. And then go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Exodus will tell you that when Moses came down off the mountain after being in Mount Sinai, in the presence of the Lord. When he came down, he was glowing. But when the Bible says he makes his face to shine upon you, that he is the Lord glorifying you. You see, Jesus want to give you a glow. Jesus want to give you joy. Jesus wants to put an expression on your face where the world would be able to look at you and tell that you got something different. Tell that you're not afraid. They see the glory. They see the anointing. They see the power operating in your life. And they'll ask you, what is it? Why are you so happy? Why are you so clear-eyed? Why are you so excited? You're telling that on the hill, far away, stood an old rugged cross. Yeah! Yeah! How many want his glory? How many want the glory? Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Ah, shine. Lord, let me hear you. Use your preaching voice. Tell the Lord. Ah, shine. Ah, shine. Shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse let it shine, shine on me. I don't want to be no sad Christian. I don't even like hanging around Christians who have no joy, full of complaining, ain't never got anything good to say. Let me tell you something. I'm just like the prophet Isaiah. I heard him say in the year King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and the seraphim were flying around shouting holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. The whole earth, they said the whole earth, they said the whole earth is filled with his glory. And as I look around, with everything that's going on in the world, I can see the glory of God. I see the power. I see the anointing. I got something to shout about. I got something to get excited about. Can you say yeah? Can you say yeah? Got 
something to be excited about. If you can see the glory of God, give him praise all in the house. Do you have joy? Are you happy in Jesus? Are you saved and glad about it? Are you saved and got the joy on the inside? I'm talking about in the midst of COVID, in the midst of death, in the midst of struggles, in the midst of strain, there's still something. Steal something to shout about. Wave your hands and give God praise. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I want, yes. I want his countenance on me. And then he said, The Lord, the Lord, make his face. Rock, are we doing all right? The Lord, make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. You know what gracious is? Uh, Brother Brother Powell says, Powell, let me tell you why. You're standing there today. Survived cancer. Look like you've never been sick. Let me tell you why. Ah! I feel like hollering a little while. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. You're standing there today. Oh, Keisha, let me tell you why. Oh, Lord. Man, let me tell you why. Honey, let me tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's because of God's graciousness. Brother Henry, let me tell you why. It's because God's been gracious. And what is God's gracious? God's graciousness is God's favor. It's God's favor, and that favor is God. It's when God directs his full attention to you. The earth is the home of over 8 billion people, but God knows how to make you feel like he ain't looking at nobody. He ain't working on nobody. He ain't touching anybody but you because he's taking care of you. How many have ever experienced his favor? If you've experienced his favor, you ought to thank the Lord right now. He knows how to make you feel like nobody in the world but you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt his love? Have you ever felt his love when he wraps his arms around when he whispers in your ear in the midnight hour something's humming y'all get rid of that home so I can preach finish preaching oh lord oh lord got it now he knows how to just make you feel like ain't nobody in the world but you have you ever experienced it have you ever been down and you felt the power of the Lord come in it was his favor and then he said in, in addition to his being gracious he said the Lord lift up his countenance upon you what is that talking about what is he saying when he asks God and so when God says, I want to lift up my countenance upon you, I want to pretend now I'm not the Lord. Ain't nobody God but Jehovah. But I want to pretend to be the Lord for the sake of trying to explain this verse to you. And our brother, God's a woman, Brother Terry, come here. Mm, I'm the Lord and you're in need. I want you to call on the Lord. Jesus! Make your hand call Jesus. You know what happens when he said the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Call him again. Jesus! When call, that means when you call him, he'll do this. I'm so glad he looked my way. Aren't you glad?
never called him and it went to voicemail. I've never called him and found out that he deleted me. But every time I call him, oh, he looks my way. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Oh, Lord. One time. I'm so glad he looked my way. I'm so glad he looked my way. I'm so glad. Everybody say, I'm so glad you look my way. Hey, now, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you look my way. Lift your hands and say, yeah. Let's hold this because it's time for me to pray this prayer. Ah, uh, but he's going to look, oh, Lord, my way. When I call him, he causes, uh, he lifts his, the Lord lift his countenance upon thee and look at the end result. The end result is peace. Somebody said peace. Peace. Good God Almighty. Peace in the Hebrew vocabulary means more than the absence of war, more than the absence of trouble and storms, but peace involves a quietness of heart on the inside. Uh, our church mothers were not theologians. They were not great writers. They were not great orators. So they didn't know how to talk about quietness of the heart on the inside. They just said, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. I wonder how many today, with everything that's going on, do you feel that everything, I'm talking about everything, is still going to be all right? That's the Lord's peace. It's the peace that passeth all understanding. God wants us to have spiritual health, spiritual prosperity. And look at this, look at this, look at this. This is peace. Adequacy for all of the demands of this life. That is, whatever comes up, whatever happens, life, death, sickness, health, financial problems, you name it. God knows how to give you peace. You have peace because you know that whatever happens, the God you serve is adequate. How many know that God is a God who's more than enough and he's up for the job? Woo! Man, it gives me joy. It makes me want to run. It makes me want to shout when I think about how good he is. And then not only is there adequacy for all of the demands of life, but a kind of spiritual well-being that rises above all of the circumstances of this life. See, some of us, people, you know, people have been saying we're in denial. They call us arrogant. And, uh, but we had a feeling. We had a peace. The only time we, we didn't, the only time we were really disturbed, and I'm be honest with you, when I felt that I was in danger, it when they made me close the church. And only a few of us could come and have service. And I had to preach to empty pews and pretend y'all were in here. I made you up in my mind. I could, you know, people are creatures of habit. Everybody said pretty much the same place. So I, brother, I saw you, but you couldn't come. So I, I pretended you were here. But I knew I would come, I would come in. I would come in um, on my work day 
John, you know you caught me in it, would come in and sit in the sanctuary and tell the Lord, God, we got to get back. You got to do something, Lord. The governor shut us down. Now, you know, we were, now we never stopped coming to the church, but the saints couldn't come. And look at God. The Lord got in it. And our sense of peace haven't come from staying home, I'm safe. No, there's a peace that we gain by just being able to walk up in here. Somebody told me the other day, said, Bishop, it was just good to be in this service. He said to me, the smell of the wood, the feeling of the pews, the saints of God, churching in real life. See, you know, folk watch you on TV and all that. They, 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 and thank God for it, especially for those who can't get here. But you know, most people who watch you on TV, they watch you and four other things at the same time. It ain't the same. Even your favorite movie, you don't just stay glued to it. But it's something about being in here. And when God opened the door, it changed everything. A peace came back. Hey, 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 burial. I'm going to do you like Jesus did. Here it is. Jesus said, my peace, I leave with you. I give it to you. See, not as the world give peace, uh, but, but I leave you my peace. And I thank God today, saints, for the peace of God. I thank God for it. I thank God for peace. And, and the Lord says, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. You know why? Because the power is in his name. The power is still in his name. Amen. The power is in his name. We identify with that name. We don't apologize for the name. The power is in the name of Jesus Christ. We represent Jesus. He's going to bless you today. He's blessed you already. But he's going to bless you. But he's blessing you, Sister Young, to be a witness. He's blessing us to share it. Oh, my. To let the world know it's still true. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Nobody. Can't nobody. Nobody. Nothing. Nowhere. No kind of way. We, we, I'm not changing. And, uh, and uh, when my time's up and I go home, the next man operate in the same spirit. Amen. Good God Almighty. Because the Lord is our keeper. He's our strength. I want to read this blessing. And I'm not going to deviate from it. I'm going to read it. The Lord said, pronounce it over the saints. And and, 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 and and tell everybody you alright tell everybody who wants it it's for them it's the blessing see this is not a blessing this is the blessing this blessing blesses your offspring it blesses you generationally this blessing gives you God's presence God's favor and God's attention. What do you need from God if you have his presence, favor, and attention? What else do you need? Nothing. Because if you have his favor, presence, and attention, that's it. That's it. This blessing. You see, I can't let the uh, Nazarites, they it's got to come from the priests. And tell the priest to do it. Read it like it is. You remember that song, God don't need no matches? Full of, full of double negatives. God don't need no matches. He's foul by himself. But you get the point. He does. And he is. 
And as I read this to you, those who are spiritual, you receive it and begin to praise the God of the Bible and praise him as you move out of your self and you move into this because the Lord is going to use you. He's blessing us to be a blessing. Your nation, your community, your family, and the world in which we live needs you and they need me but they don't need us behaving like them they need us showing forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light glory to God glory to God and I'm, I'm looking at people I'm looking at people that God's going to use I'm looking at people that God's going to use. Now, some of you today, the Lord going to sure you up because see, this message came to you right on time because the pineapple juice done got heavy. You've been broken. Because the church world, the church world found clever ways to disguise fear. The truth is, they were afraid. And many still are. Did y'all see the victory God gave John MacArthur? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The governor of California. I hope he get recalled. Um, um, what's his name? New G Gavin Newsom went against John MacArthur. The John MacArthur. Yes, sir. And, and uh, tried to shut his church down. What was John's crime? They wanted to worship. He wanted to, the, the same right that the whole houses had, the vape stores, the ABC stores, the rioters. You know it's this? All when they were rioting and burning things down in the name of George Floyd, didn't nobody say anything about COVID. Not one word. Folk out there screaming, hot, spittle. No justice! No peace. George Floyd! Call his name. All that, all that, but, but in California, they, they told churches that the choirs couldn't sing. Because, you know, and notice this, ain't nobody talking about that no more. Because, you know, when you sing and when you praise, it, 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 the, the, the spittle, the, the moisture from your mouth travels about 13 feet. No, it's all the stuff they've been telling you that you don't hear anymore now. So all of a sudden, singers stop singing. We didn't. What? What? Man, the Bible says sing unto the Lord. Now, man say don't sing, and God's word says sing. Now, whose word you gonna take? Y'all ain't saying nothing because some of you took man. Whose word you gonna take? I, uh, God says, forsake not the assemblings of yourself together. Ain't no asterisk in the Bible that says except for COVID. There's no asterisk in the Bible that says in order to stay safe. Christianity wasn't built on the backs of people who wanted to stay safe. Christianity is built on the backs of mortars. Now what makes you so special? People died. Peter died. John was dipped in oil. They tried to kill him. More importantly, Jesus died. He did all that. Can I get a witness? Amen. MacArthur won. Yes, and the government, they got to pay him, his church, But you know what I wonder, Mother? I wonder if any holiness churches, any Kojic churches, stood with it. Where are we? What kind of church are we? Where are we when it counts? Where are we? Where, when, when do we now let our voice be heard? Is the only thing that we can speak up on is racism that took place in uh, 
14, 16, uh, 19. Is that it? I want to talk about sin in 2021. Amen. Right, we ain't going back. Because ain't nobody in here, no one in here is suffering from anything that took place in 16, 19. Nothing. You're not suffering from anything that took place in 1960. You're not suffering from something that took place in 1970. Unless you made some bad moves back then. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling because of systemic racism. What, what does that mean? I can't even tell you. These are just terms that people embrace because it, it excuses in many cases their lack of willingness to work hard and to fight to do what it takes to get ahead. There ain't, ain't gonna never be a perfect world. The big, you know what the biggest, you know what the biggest remedy, I got to pray. You know what the biggest remedy for racism is? Uh, for us to quit, get, fall out with, give up our love affair with planned parenthood. And grow our numbers. The Hispanics have come over here and outgrown us. And now they're bringing in Afghans. I told somebody the other day, blacks just got moved down a little further. Because they're going to bring him, they're going to bring them in and give them houses. And give them jobs. You got people right out there right now, homeless. We won't give them a house. We won't give them a job. So we're going to bring these people in. And they found out that most of the Afghanis that uh, the Biden administration brought in weren't even the ones who helped us. So women, beware, because they come from a society where you are nothing. So you have to be careful. That's, that's good word right there. That's a good word right there. Amen. It's time to read this to you. It's time to bless you. It's time to bless you. It's time to bless me. Oh, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The world needs to see us blessed with these spiritual blessings. Our women strong. Our men strong. Don't get me started on that. I think I will get on it. I got to meet with a little girl next week. She's about this tall. She's a little girl. She's a little girl. She might be in high school or junior high. She's a little girl. And her mama brought her to me after the 8 o'clock. And she requested a meeting. And Patricia told me to call you. Move. Whatever. I need, to, I, I need to meet with her. She said in her class, several of her teachers are homosexuals. And here's a little black girl. And she says, um, I stood in my class the other day as they made fun of Christianity. And I stood for Christ. And you know, she wanted she want to talk to her pastor. She want to talk to me to get reinforcements. I was so proud of her. See, see some, some of you girls, all y'all doing, y'all coddling these sisters. I ain't studying them. They got the devil in them. And anytime, anytime they got Christians outnumbered, go get go, you, this little pretty little girl, go get her in the class and just, just throw off on her and make fun of her faith. And she. Just a little girl. Younger than you, a little girl. And she, see, power and example begets power and example. Good, don't get me. I, I need about 40 more minutes. I'm just playing. Y'all don't give me 40. But, but you see, some of us, you know why this don't move some Christians? Some Christians have caved. Well, I just keep my religion to myself. You know, it's a private thing just between me and the Lord anyway. One of the biggest lies that's ever been told on Christianity is that it's a private thing. It's never been private. 
Did Jesus keep it to himself? Did, did, did John the Baptist keep it to himself? Did Paul keep it to himself? Did Peter? Matter of fact, you're not even saved till you tell somebody. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession. That ain't talking to the Lord, that's talking to someone else. Confession is made into salvation. You got to tell somebody. I can't wait to meet with her. I'm going to give her some, some of my best talking points and send her back in there. You fight for Jesus. And her mama standing right there. Thank God she ain't got to fight her parents. Her mama standing right there beside her. And her mother brought her to me. And her mother wasn't bringing her to me saying, tell her to be quiet. Thank God for that. But tell her to stand her ground and she's going to do it. See, the devil wants us to change. I'm not changing. They try to make you think that the problem is we don't understand. We're not the ones who lack understanding. We understand. And God ain't never told no man to be with no man. We understand that. No woman to be with a woman. All right, let me give you the blessing. Y'all ready for your blessing? Amen. Lift your hands to him. As, as the pastor and leader of this church, as the ranking officer in this church, I want to read the blessing. Hallelujah. In this church, I represent Aaron. And the presbytery, the elders and all, represent his sons. But the pastor is at the top. So from the position that God has given me in this church, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his, make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus name receive it right now. Our friends online, receive it right now. Receive the blessing. God's blessing your children. God's blessing the ground. God's blessing your job. God's blessing your health. God's blessing your well-being. God's keeping you from danger and oppression. God's blessing you with his presence. He's blessing right now. He's blessing right now. He's blessing right now. Receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. Oh, oh. Receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for looking my way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. different strains no matter how many things come out I am the Lord I am the Lord I am the Lord who have blessed you I am the Lord the Lord bless thee and keep thee 
The Lord maketh his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. The Lord give thee peace. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord bless and keep. I've kept you until now. I can continue to keep. You were not lucky. You were not fortunate. It was not happenstance. It was not by coincidence. But I kept you. I recovered you. I revived you. I restored you. Jesus. Woo! Woo! Mm, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Transitioning to our communion. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 Lord. Filling me with his blessings. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. 